Welcome back to another acting analysis and tips for animators, and today I want to take a look at the movie The Invisible Man. Got a lot of sequences to cover and actually sequences from the deleted scenes, but before I do so, hi, my name is JD. And if you're new to this channel, I do acting analysis clips like these. I do animation analysis clips. I do lectures about animation. I do animation news, rig reviews, product reviews, feedback, all kinds of things. So feel free to browse around the channel. If this is something that you like, feel free to hit subscribe and that bell button so you don't miss any of my uploads. That's it. Let's go straight to the sequences. First up from the deleted sequences, we have this moment here where she comes in and he realizes, oh wait, this might be slightly uncomfortable because he thinks that she might think that she is another girlfriend of his. <laughs> so it's all about gesturing, flailing around, being uncomfortable, but also reactions from a character. So you can see this, that the moment he realizes, oh yeah, this is not a good idea here. You can see this, you can see a lot of movement. In one of those cases, I'm actually okay for all that flailing. Usually I would tell people, mm, kind of tone down your arm movements, it's a bit too overdone. But in his case, it showcases that he is uncomfortable. He is flailing around, he's just not sure what's going on. And the other thing is her reaction. So as he does all of this, I will look at her, how she either nods, she goes, okay, okay, yeah, that's what we're doing here. And you can look at how much the head is leaning forward. Then he goes back until they're not like, okay, let me adjust and say hi. They're all very comfortable now to say hi. And then you got the moment of no one saying anything. So, all right, well, what are you gonna do? All right, what are you gonna do? And I love, <laughs> I love that face. It's so good. It's like, all right, so what now? She realizes, all right, this is not very comfortable. Let me just go somewhere. And I love this, that she doesn't know what to say or what to do. So she does like a super random, I gotta do something. Again, I love, love that choice. It's just a great moment. He does a lot of, again, movement, nervous touching of the face as well. And then he goes into, all right, well, let me explain what's going on. And then you can see, all right, so it, it's a bit less flaily, but he still has a lot of arm movements. He still goes, all right, let me explain things to you. And I love her reactions where, it's always listening. It's a lot of nodding. It's like, okay, yeah, but it's a bit of a lean back. It's like, all right, I'm not quite with you. It's not like she leans forward and goes, it's okay, it's okay. It's more of a, mm, yeah, I'm not sure what is going on. So as he tries to continue and to explain things in his very nervous ways, she continues like, all right, all right, this is okay, but let me interrupt you. So it goes on for way too long. And that's why she goes, okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, that's fine. We've only been on two dates. And then you can see her, his reaction. So you look at the contrast of all of this, right? All of the movement, bodies moving, nervous touching. And then when she tells him, listen, we've only been on two dates, he realizes, ooh, this might not end well. And you can see how he stops. Bam, stopping. Just a little bit of a nod. And all of this, you can see this, how he just sinks in. No darts, no flailing, you know, nothing. He realizes, oh, okay. And that's when he goes, all right, all right, I think I lost her. And then he goes back into, all right, well, hey, let me let me uh, explain things to you. And then she goes, nope, I got to go to work. It's like, all right, all right. And I love that too, that it's just kind of nodding to himself, realizing, yep, yeah, yeah, that that did not go well. He still tries. And as he tries to explain things, <laughs> I love her reactions. She has so many of, huh. And that's why I love this, because acting is reacting, as people say. But it's so good where this is a great example of what if, as I said in many, many clips, if this is your lip sync, it can be on this character. So you don't have to worry about the mouth shapes and everything. And it's all about another character listening and reacting. And this is a great example of, hmm, yeah. And she does that again later on here where she has, huh, mm, oh, yeah. That's oh. <laughs> so good. I love that reaction. You can tell she is not buying this at all. And it continues on. He just completely fails. And she tells him, listen, I'm just going to get out of here. Now, this one is from a deleted scene as well. And even though she's laughing here, she's really not comfortable. I'm going to move forward to this moment here where you can see that she realizes ah, this is really not going to be great. The shoulders are up. That's tense. You see that part in the throat. That's tense. Her arms are together. Everything is just tight confined to that box even when she walks look at that she's got very it's very it just it's not big and bra and confident compared to her arm is dangling it's free she has a lot of up and down in the root watch this doom, doom. very confident in her walk we can go all the way back here where she has a lot more left and right and swaying she's very powerful you might even read into 
this, even though that's just kind of hanging on, you know, to a prop, but you might even read into it, well, she wants to be in control. She's holding this. This is control. I'm reading way too much into this. But to me, this is just all about contrast. You got two characters. How are you going to make them look differently? How are you going to make them move differently and behave differently? And as she realizes that, this is her sister, by the way. So my sister is not in good shape here. Let me put my arm around that. And then you got that moment of contact and they have a bit of a sisterly thing going on at the end here. And I can see still, yeah, it's not quite working, but all right, let me try this again. And then she lets go. And then you see this as she lets go of her arms here. She lets go of that here, realizing, all right, let's do this. And they're both a bit more confident it worked and they're a bit more equal. Even here on that random frame, you can see they're almost the same height. It's almost like, all right, we're equal, not that in competition, but they have almost equal strength, equal posing, we're okay. Versus here, and it's because she's closer to camera, but still, she is taller. It makes her look smaller because of that potentially weaker. So you got that whole strong versus not strong. I wouldn't say weak, but she's just nervous. She's afraid. So think about that as you have a scene with multiple characters, be it two or three. What can you do to make them different? Is it important to have a height difference for maybe a status level? Is it important for them to be somewhat on the same level? Is it important for them to be close or for one person to be in front of the other person? So all of that staging and that distance relationship will tell us something about the characters, how they feel and how they feel, you know, towards each other. Speaking of pose, this is a simple scene as I scrub through, she gets a phone call and that's it. But why do I like this? A, it's because this is almost like your classic waiting assignments that you get in school. And let's say you put the phone here so we understand what's going on so it's not hidden. But that tells us something. She is not in a comfortable space in terms of happy or excited. It's just like, oh, it's the head hurts or she's tired. So that initial pose already tells us something. Then as the phone rings, you can see this. So it's not a crazy jumping out of the chair thing, but it's also not a super relaxed, oh, all right, I guess the phone is ringing. So it's more of a, oh. So how someone reacts to whatever outside sounds or movement or a character coming in will tell us something about this character. Then look at how she picks up the phone. She looks at this display for a long time, holds this, still looking, it's a big pause, then finally grabs the phone, still looking. So do you grab the phone quickly? Is it because you're really anticipating and waiting for the phone call? Are you dreading a phone call? Are you confused about who's calling? All of that goes through the timing and the pantomime of your character that well, obviously you are in charge of as an animator. And then when she finally turns on the phone and listens and hears who it is, look at her change in the body is, oh, okay. Because it's someone she knows and it's not something she was dreading. So again, think about all of that in your waiting assignment. What is the initial pose and posture? What is that telling us about the character? What is the reaction to an event? How is the movement towards the event or the interaction with the event and how is the final reaction to the reveal of whatever it is of the character and if you want to go of course in terms of animation go bigger with contrast you wouldn't mirror the pose unless that is of course your story point but if you want to go for contrast it might be you're dreading things and at the end it's a happy phone call where the character is hey how are you doing is great so you have a bit more of a contrasty not a circle move here but a contrasty Posture change between this and my crazy drawing. Where is it? Here at the end. And again, another deleted scene. All of these have been deleted scenes. But he comes into her room and is slightly confused as to why she is sitting on the floor, not here anywhere else. And it's almost facing this and it's just very confusing. And at this point, he just doesn't know what to do. As an audience, you might also be confused by what I love here is a camera reveal. And... Bum, bum, bum. She's looking at this. A lot of camera reveals or also empty shots in the movie where she goes, there's someone sitting in the chair. And you, it's always like the Where's Waldo thing. You're, you're looking and you're looking and is this going to move? Is this going to move? Is this going to have, you know, is the cushion going to move? You start really looking and I love that in the movie where you have a lot of these or you have even moments where someone is standing here and a lot of empty space and you almost think, well, Something has to move because this is a lot of room for us to look at. But anyway, going back to this here, she is really freaked out by this chair. She thinks that character, the invisible man, is sitting here. And there are a couple of things about this is that as he realizes she is not okay, let me help her. So he gets over there and does the whole thing of, see, there's no one in here. There's no one in the chair. The main thing I want to show you, so that's the awesome camera reveal here because you don't always have to have a camera reveal in your, in your shot, 
is this here. So as he tries to comfort her or to explain something or whatever you want to do in your scene, this is important to me how he squats down to be somewhat on the same level. So if someone is in distress, you got to think about, well, is my character going to keep standing to talk down? Is that threatening? Is there again a status importance of I'm higher and more important than you? Or is my character going to go down to be somewhat on the same level? This is an adult talking to a kid that might be standing. Maybe this character is also going to sit down. Is it enough distance? Would it be too threatening because this character is in distress to be too close? Who should the character be here? Would it be here and maybe leaning in? She leans away and then he goes back to this because he realizes this is too close. This is making it too uncomfortable. So think about that. Again, if you have multiple characters, is this important? You have the spatial distance here. Is it important to this? Is it important to actually change the distance throughout the shot to show a progression, to show the relationship, what the intentions are, and so on and so on. Really think about the composition and the staging of multiple characters within your scene. And speaking of staging, actually, I'm picking this one. This is for context. They are having a good moment here. He hears a sound and he's upset about it. It's like, ah, and he has to go towards whatever it is. Don't spoil it. And then she gets towards him and tells him I can do this. And then she goes out as well. I'm showing you this because of a, just a general idea of staging and what you can do in terms of showing off your animation based on where the characters are towards camera. It is something that I mentioned a couple of times, but this is always a good example here where you have an almost full body view of the character. So lip sync will be less important because you can't see as much. It's going to be more about general mechanics and posture and just the movement. So in here, this is your chance now to show a walk. And the walk here shows that, ah, oh, really, I got to do this. You can see the lean in the head. Ah, oh, big steps. All right. No, it's fine. I can handle this. And now, you're close to camera. So now technically, whatever you're gonna do, you can show off close up facial acting. So you went from, let me show you how I can animate, but I can do weight shift and a walk. This is already difficult to do. Now I'm here and I can do facial acting. On top of that, if you have multiple characters, you can do, I'm standing and I'm sitting on a table. So once you're done with this character, as you move forward, now you can show off how this character gets off of a sitting position. And that's a different mechanic that you can show off with different kind of walks, different kind of scale, different kind of age and gender and everything. The walks are gonna be different, but the same idea, you're close to camera now, now you can focus on facial acting. All of this in one shot. This actually continues where she says, I can do this, and she exits. And with that, you can do a couple of things. So as he tells her, right, go ahead, I love this. I'm always a big fan of gestures. You can see how that arm, you can see the change, right? You can see the chest here, the arm comes in and that. Now watch this in real time. It's just doing this. But we understand what's going on. He's gesturing out. If you will continue, a hand probably pointing towards the door. Go ahead. And it's something that I love because it's a natural move. The actor just did this, but we're just framing it like that. So we're kind of missing it. So not everything always has to be completely silhouetted and presentational towards the camera. And that's, as I mentioned in one of my Spider-Verse analysis clips, this is something that that movie does a lot. And I love this. It's just a bit more natural acting and the framing just happens to capture it like this. And about the ending here, as she exits, this could be maybe, let's pretend this is your shot. Just this and this character exits. You're still showing weight shift. It's not super complex in terms of showing off the pelvis and the legs, you can't see anything, but you still have weight shifts and the mechanics. And maybe it's all about whatever they said, she makes a choice and exits and it's about his reaction. So as she goes out, he still looks at her. So this could be your pantomime moment and as I said many times, you might have lip sync. And even though the lip sync ends, doesn't mean that you have to end the shot. You can still continue with pantomime and a thought process and just now your creative choices because the lip sync is done. This is now all you and you can end the shot with something else, potentially changing the whole meaning or, or the subtext or revealing the subtext of a shot just through the pantomime and the facial acting without sound, which is all your creativity. This sequence is all about Reactions and also posture, mainly about him, but it's in the next sequence I want to show why this is important. But just to pay attention to it now, he just always has shoulders up and a hunched spine here and the head kind of down. He's never straight and confident or powerful. He always has this kind of posture. But this whole thing is more about reactions. And this is a very long sequence, but I cut things together. So you can see she, at this point, reveals all kinds of things to him and to him. So in terms of reactions, as she says things, 
you have reactions like this, where he doesn't even acknowledge her. He talks to the other guy and he has maybe a lot of eyebrow movements and a little bit of hand movements here. But this is mainly how far he goes in terms of reactions. Now, she said something and he wants to show support. And this is really cool because he leans back to say, no, I'm with her and I'm going to listen to her and she's my friend and everything else. Now, you can push this where you go from this, right? He is, there's a distance here. He is leaning away from her. And he goes, no, I'm with her, I'm supporting her. You can push this by potentially having him a lot closer, maybe even the arm around her. But you are closing the gap from this distance to, again, if you go closer, to a smaller distance, making them almost one united unit. So visually, you're also showing I'm with her. It's not just lip sync, but also body-wise, posture-wise, posing-wise, and the relationship in terms of the distance, you show we are together. Now, as she continues with her reveals, you can see her reactions where he just has, huh? Very small, subtle moves. Same thing with him. Huh? Just like a quick little move. And throughout this whole sequence, it escalates. But the reactions are not massively bigger, but for the character, they are slightly bigger. Now, he does a bit of a bigger move here. Like, what? What is going on? And then he does a, huh? And this. And again, reactions because he does not a lot because he is still like this. A reaction like that is pretty big because he has a lot of eyebrow movement and he's got the extra finger movements. So your reactions don't have to be, whoa, arms out, crazy, 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 because the baseline for him is to be constantly like this. So the contrast of an eyebrow up move like this is big for him. So we continue on. Again, she reveals more things. You can see I'm cutting here. And then you have reactions with him going, Huh? So you think about reactions of, is this a huh, a quick move or a slow, wait, what? And all of that can work. You also have the blink here. Wait, what? So you got that blink of what did I just hear and a slow move. So again, reactions don't have to be big. Then you go to him again and he's got, all right, well, I heard some really interesting, crazy stuff. And this is now the contrast. And you can see how, again, he leans forward, head is down. This, again, is more about the next sequence, but just pay attention to that. But she continues on with more reveals, and you can see him going, huh? <laughs> so it's, it gets bigger and bigger. Now, again, he had a bigger head move, so it's not a huge contrast, but within the sequence, it just feels like it's an escalation getting bigger and bigger. And what I love about this is that this is the biggest thing she says, where he goes, wait, what? And that's his biggest thing of, I can't believe I just heard this. And instead of having a bigger reaction, it's, did you hear what I heard? And I love this. It's so small. Yes, he has something here, but it's mainly this. And then sometimes, you know, less is more. Just him trying to find acknowledgement, trying to go, did you hear what I just heard is enough. And you don't have to go big with your reactions. Now, as she says more and more and more, you can see that he is just not on board with her thoughts and with her interpretations of things you can see this as he starts to move back and he's got the sigh like oh, and you can tell no just through that i am not with you anymore he's not visually leaning away from her like ah oh, i'm out of here but still posture wise and all of that movement after being still and listening to her you realize yeah that that's not good i'm not with you anymore and again with him as he talks now you can see as he goes forward he just continues on with this hunch over, head down, shoulder up move, which leads into the next sequence, which is this. And again, we see him and he is again, always hunched over, arms are together, the arms are not up here. He's never confident. And throughout this whole sequence, which is long, which again, which I cut together or cut some things out, even when he has to grab something, it's not like the suitcase is up here, the suitcase is low, which again, forces him to go even lower. He has to hunch down even more. You can see this here. As it continues, again, back in this pose, as he wants to tell her something, hunched over, even lower. As she reacts to something, it's not like he is, whoa, and he's straighter, arms up, defensive, or straighter in his posture. No, it's still back to that. That is his default pose. And as he picks something up, again, visually, he is again, hunched over, everything is like this. And as he exits, you can see here, I'm gonna play this, you can see, look at the walk. It's not, a lot of big swings in his arms, tense here in the fingers. You can tell it's still around the back as we go back here, you can see here, rounded. And I love this because at this point in the scene, she realizes, oh, you are a horrible character. 
And she tells him, oh, wait a minute, you have no spine. She tells him this at the beginning. You are a horrible person. You have no spine. You have nothing where you have your own thoughts. And when I heard this, oh yeah, he doesn't have a spine. He's always so hunched over. It's never straight. It's just a spineless character. And throughout the movie, that's his default pose. It's always that type of constant demeanor and that's how he always is. Now, this is tricky because in an animated shot, you might just have that, a shot. You don't have the luxury of a two-hour movie of showing this multiple times, of showing the progression, really putting that, even if it's a subtle way, showing this is what my character is. But still, it's something to think about. Is my character spineless? Is my character confident? Is my character tired? Think about that before you start your shot. As I said in one of my posing FNAs, you can't take your your T-pose, whatever you have, and then lower your arms and go, that's it. This is what I'm going to have as my character. No, no, no. This is your arms down, the rig modified pose, but not your character pose. Is it, well, like I said, whatever posture you have, because if you are like this, maybe the character becomes more alert throughout your scene. And that gives you contrast, gives you room to go somewhere from here to here. So as always, think about the state of the mind of the character, the headspace, just what is their emotional space and situation they're in that happened before and will happen and after the character and all of that will determine the pose of your character, the posture and the changes. And it doesn't have to be big. You can do something where it just changes are like that. And that is the whole thing of the character. They're just very contained and maybe because they're frightened, they're scared and you're going to have a very limited movement and contrast of movement. And sometimes it's okay to go from something tense to something relaxed. But even though it's small, you still feel the difference between shoulders up and a tense thing to something a bit more relaxed. As long as you have contrast and room to grow in terms of the pose changes. Speaking of changes, if you wanna make a change in your workflow maybe, and you want me to help you with your shots, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find segues here. I have workshops, they're always open, link in the description with all the information. So if you want me to help you and make your shots even more awesome, feel free to sign up. Sign ups are always open. And as always, if you watch this whole clip till the very end, I appreciate your time and the fact that you spent the time watching till the very end. And that's it from me. If you don't miss anything, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button so you don't miss any of my uploads. You know the drill at the end. That's it from me. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next clip.